in a society that encourages doing, it's become crucial to our happiness that we shift the focus to being. In this edition of Thursday's Thought, I share one of my cornerstone coaching concepts that will help you achieve what you desire in an accelerated timeline. Tune in and learn how your habit of doing is negatively impacting your life, why being is the only true way to achieve what you want, and how to make the shift from doing to being. If you're seeking a coach and mentor to help you activate your voice and unleash your mission, I invite you to apply to work with me today at rubyfremont.com forward slash let's talk. Whether you're new to this podcast or you're a loyal thought leader, please make sure you take a moment to download a few episodes, drop a rating and review on iTunes, because this is what's going to help me get into the charts. Now it is time to dive into being versus doing in this edition of Thursday's Thought. Welcome to today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. I'm your host, Ruby Fremont, and I'm here as a catalyst for you, the new generation of thought leaders. Join me every week as I dive into raw and real conversations that will help you amplify your presence, influence, and impact. Hey, thought leaders, and welcome to this edition of Thursday's Thought. And uh, I want to share some thoughts on one of my favorite concepts. In fact, this is a cornerstone in my work with my clients, uh, my work at events, my work at retreats, and it's the concept of being versus doing. Now, let's get real. We live in a society that focuses and encourages doing, you know, work hard, do more, achieve this, get that, get this certification, get that degree, get this job, do the things. And it's no wonder that we have, as a society have gotten caught up in the doing. But now we're reaching this point in our conscious collective where we're starting to understand the importance of being. And I witness this a lot with my audience, with my listeners, with my clients, with the people who come to me to work with me, is that they get so caught up in the doing that they forget about themselves. They forget about who they know that they're here to be. They forget about being who they know they're here to be. Because what happens when you get caught up in the doing is you lose sight of yourself. And when you lose sight of yourself, you lose sight of what's actually really important to you, not important to your parents or your teachers or your loved ones or what society deems as as important, but important to you. You lose sight of what's important to you when you get caught up in the doing. And when you get caught up in the doing, you get, you get lost. You feel lost. You lose sight of who you are. Because you're so fixated on doing, it's hard to celebrate your wins because once you achieve this thing, you're on to the next thing. It's like this endless rat race of trying to accumulate all these different achievements in in doing and, and doing without any intention. And maybe you found yourself in this place and and I call it a rat race because that's kind of what it feels like. It can also feel like a hamster wheel where you're doing and you're doing and you're doing and you don't even know why the fuck you're doing the things that you're doing. I see this a lot with entrepreneurs getting caught up in um, producing shit for the sake of producing shit. You know, they're just doing and they're just going through the motions because they think that this is what they need to do. And sure, they might be producing a lot of things. They might have a lot of courses or programs or offers or products. And yet none of those courses or or offers or products or programs feel aligned with who they truly are because they don't know who the fuck they are because they've lost sight of who they are because they're caught up in the doing. You know, I always say it's like easy to have a purpose and it's easy to have a vision. Like it's easy to, to have those things. What's difficult is going after them. And it's difficult because we get caught up in the doing right? If we talk about vision and my 
good friend and soul brother, Joel Brown, is such an expert on vision. Um, If you haven't heard of him, please go back to the episode on this podcast where I speak with him. I'll drop that in the show notes. But Joel always talks about vision and he ties this concept of being versus doing into vision because you can map out your vision, you can create a vision board, you can write it all out. But if you're not being who you need to be to fulfill that vision, then that vision is never going to come true. You know, we wait until we achieve the thing to become the thing when really it's the other way around. We need to become it before we can achieve it. So this is where I share the concept, the full concept. It's be, do, have versus have, do, be. Now, like I said, most of our society and and just, just how we've been raised and what we've been taught and what we've been encouraged to do, most of our society is running on have, do, be. And what have, do, be looks like is you're waiting to have the thing so you can do what you want to do to become the person you want to be. And this is laid out perfectly with our education system. If you look at college degrees or university degrees, say you want to be a lawyer. Well, you're going to wait to have the thing. So that means the the degree in law. So you can do what you want. So you can get that job as a lawyer. So you can become the lawyer that you want to be because you believe that being a lawyer is going to create success, right? So people um, go after these degrees for, for these reasons. Like I want to create success. I want to create happiness. I want to create fulfillment. So I'm going to have the degree that's going to allow me to do this work so that I can be happy, so that I can be fulfilled, so that I can be successful. And it's modeled perfectly, like I said, in our education system. So we've all grown up with this. And a lot of parents raise their kids because they've, after this model, this concept of have, do, be, because they've been raised this way. You know, if you want to be happy in life, you have to have the money to do all the things that you want, which will create the happiness. But this is why there's such an incongruence. Like there's some of the richest people in the world are also some of the most unhappiest people in the world. And I have talked to six plus seven plus figure entrepreneurs who have achieved the monetary success that they've been chasing through all the doing. And then they get to that place and they realize they're not happy. They, they don't feel fulfilled. And it's because there was no focus really put on who you're being on this journey. So as much as you've been raised to follow this concept of have, do, be, I'm encouraging you to shift that, shift that because this is what will really work for you. And it's be, do, have. Now be, do, have looks like being who you need to be, which allows you to do the things you need to do so you can have the things you desire having, right? So let's take um, monetary success. As an example, having all the money, having all the abundance. A a lot of people chase money, not because they just want money. They chase money because they feel like money is going to unlock happiness for them. It's going to unlock freedom for them. It's going to unlock fulfillment for them. You know, money's going to help them travel the world and be a nomad, or money's going to help them raise their family. And there's so many different reasons that people want money, but it always leads back to the happiness, the fulfillment. And if we think about ourselves in our most happiest states, if we think about ourselves in our most fulfilled states, what does that actually look like? And what does that actually feel like? Who are you being when you are in your happiest state? Who are you being when you are in your most fulfilled state? And what are you doing? Because there's no reason that you can't be that now. Be, do, have works by focusing on that end result and bringing that into your current reality. This is really basic NLP. So if you focus on your vision, for example, um, if you're a vision board person, you like visuals, cool. If you like to write down your vision, that's even better, mapping it out, getting detailed. But like really then sitting with your vision and noticing what comes up for you. 
for example, if you dream of speaking on stages, visualize that moment where you're on stage speaking to a room full of people, captivating their hearts. What comes up for you? What do you feel? How are you standing? What does your presence say? Who are you being in that moment on stage to be able to speak to that audience? Step into that identity today. And yes, this is totally possible. I just mapped it out for you. <laughs> you do it through visualization, but you got to get clear on what it is that you want first, because when you get clear on your vision, you start to drop into who you need to be to fulfill that vision because you start to feel the emotions that are tied to that vision. So let me break it down for you. You want to map out your vision and it, it doesn't have to be like your 10 year vision or anything. Maybe it's just a one year vision. What do you want to come? Actually, you know what? Better yet, let's do a one-year vision. Map out your one-year vision. Where do you want to be a year from now? What do you want to have accomplished? Who do you want to be at the end of it? Um, you know, what are you chasing? Happiness, fulfillment. Uh, what is it that you're chasing? And get super clear on what that vision looks like. And then start to ask your <clears throat> start to ask yourself, who am I at the end of this one year? The person who is actually living this vision, the person who is actually being and experiencing this vision in reality, who are you being? And get clear on that person and describe that person. So a year from now, you've achieved X, Y, Z, and who are you being? Well, I am happy. I wake up every morning and I jump out of bed with excitement to get on with the day. I have the ability to travel wherever I want to go. I can take care of my family. Um, I connect with my friends. I feel super supported. And as you start to paint that picture of who you're being, you start to understand the feeling and you start to understand the energy of that person. You know, this person is happy. This person feels fulfilled. This person feels supported and connected. And then step into that person, that version of yourself, as if you're putting on a, a, an item of clothing. Step into that person today. And this is why with a lot of my clients, I like to give um, names to our different identities. You know, we have our current identity, which is probably living the have, do, be philosophy. And then we have this future self that is living the be, do, have philosophy and their being everything that they, they want to be and need to be to do the things that they want to do and have the things that they want to have. And so maybe you just name this your future self, or maybe you give it a name like Ruby 2.0, but you want to be able to describe this version of yourself. I want to be able to describe Ruby 2.0 to a T so that I am super fucking clear every single time I step out of this. You know, if I wake up, and I start to reach for my phone right away, I can recognize that this is like a, a former self habit. Whereas Ruby 2.0 doesn't reach for her phone first thing when she wakes up. Ruby 2.0 jumps out of bed and goes to the gym and does her morning rituals before she reaches for her phone. And so when you start to dive into this old former self of have, do, be, it's easier to snap out of it into the newer identity, the higher self identity, the 2.0 identity, who is being everything that you need to be to do the things you want to do and have the things you want to have. And if we break this down into energy, I mean, basic energy, thank you, Einstein, like equals like, like attracts like. And so when you're being the thing, being the version of yourself, that has already fulfilled the vision, when you're being that, then that creates a flow of energy that makes it quicker to achieve what you're here to achieve because you're being who you need to be to achieve it. So my invitation to you today 
is to shift from have, do, be to be, do, have. This isn't about fake it till you make it. This is about be it until you are it. This is about visualizing who you are at the completion of your goals. This is about visualizing who you are at the fulfillment of your vision. And then taking that identity of who you are in that moment and stepping into it today so that you can be who you need to be to do the things that you need to do and have the things that you desire having. Be, do, have versus have, do, be. So that's a powerful concept that I felt super called to share with you today. Like I said, it's a cornerstone of of my work with my clients. And if you are a purpose-driven soul who knows that they have a mission on this planet. Maybe you're an entrepreneur and you've been at it for a few years, or maybe you're just starting out in your role as a leader and you're seeking a coach and mentor to guide you on this path. Who's going to call you out on your bullshit with love, of course, and help you really embody the leader that you're here to be with full conviction. I would love, love to support you. So just head on over to my website and apply to work with me, rubyfremont.com, and then click on the work with me tab to apply. Thank you so much for joining me for another edition of Thursday's Thought on today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. Like I said, if you want to take this to the next level, level, hit me up. I'd love to chat and see how we can work together. If you dig this episode, please be sure to share it with a friend and make sure you download a few episodes, drop a rating and a review on iTunes because this helps and I would love your support in getting into the charts. If you have any questions or just want to say hi, reach out to me on social media. My handle is at I am Ruby and I am always open to receiving topic requests and guest requests. So that's it. That's all for today. Check back on Monday for a brand new episode of Today's Thought Leader.